What's up YouTube? Today I want to discuss how to make looping uplifter slash riser type of things using Vital. So I have discussed this technique in a previous video quite a long time ago where I used a feature that was actually native in Cubase. I know I've done a follow-up video on it with another plugin. I just figured the fact that you can do it in Vital is so powerful because Vital is free. I've got so many Vital tutorials on my channel and just knowing all these extra things is just going to make you better at using Vital. So I figured I'm going to try redo a lot of these types of things. So there's actually a couple of other things that Vital allows you to do where the old, older Cubase technique of you know stretching the time of a loop, um, it was a little bit unpredictable. So you were you had to kind of like plan things in advance and it became a little bit kind of like a little bit of a nightmare to set up. In Vital, it's so much easier because you can just assign LFOs to do all of this type of thing. So anyway, let's dive in and have a look. So the idea of this type of uplifting riser effect is we have a kick and bass loop that almost seemingly sounds like it speeds up and speeds up and speeds up until it kind of turns into its own pitch and then that pitch kind of starts rising and rising and rising. Um, this type of technique in Vital is actually particularly interesting because you don't have to use it for just this type of sound. You could render almost any type of sample and create risers and stuff with it. So firstly, I'm going to show you how to do this looping uplifter riser, and then we're going to get a little bit more experimental. So stay tuned for that a little bit later on in the video. So anyway, first thing that we want to do is we want to find, uh, sort of identify the part in the track which we're going to rise to. So I've got a nice drop over here in the track that I've been working on. I actually made this track in a previous stream. If you do want to go back and try find it, it's the static movement uh, sample pack uh, preview stream thing that I did. So what I want to do is I just want to capture, you know, one, one over four, like one kick and three bass notes, like a loop of just that. Like I was saying, you don't particularly have to do it exactly how I'm going to do it in this video with just the kick and the bass. You could use the percussions and the crashes and the synths to create these like tones when you're rising. I kind of prefer just the clean kick and bass because then we can build the synths and stuff around it, you know, separately. Maybe we could render them to two different layers and rise them individually to cr one, rise one and lower one or all sorts of things like that. So here what I want to do is so I just want to uh, I just want to solo the kick and bass and we're going to render this part out and I just want to pop this directly into my vital folder so let me just browse to that by default it'll be in your documents vital user and I'm going to po uh, paste this into the samples folder not the wavetables folder like I usually do so I want to name this with the BPM because that's going to be important if we want to maybe reuse the sound later on we're going to need to know what the BPM is to get it to align and everything like that. So anyway, let's just call this 140 BPM kick base SM. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add an instance of Vital. So here I'm just going to grab a part of the track which we can loop something like this. And then I'm going to put in a long single note. So here it's important that we put in C3 because what's going to happen is when we try to change the pitch of the sample that's loaded that we're going to load into the oscillator that's going to change the tempo and we want the tempo to be exactly the same tempo that we've rendered it out as so we must make sure that we trigger it at c3 we might want to just make it so that it fills up this whole loop over here and then let's jump into vital so here what we want to do is turn off oscillator one and we want to turn on the sample oscillator and we can jump in here find our user folder and let's just find the kick and bass sample that we've created. So if we listen to this, it will just be a seamless loop of that kick and bass. So here's an important thing. We want to make sure that we set the attack all the way to zero and fine tune the release so that we don't get that overlap at the end um, and that we get that nice snappy beginning of the sample. So this is particularly cool for various reasons because now we could potentially make use of the vital effects on any loop. You know, if we wanted, if we had like a percussion loop or something like that, and we wanted the vital chorus, we could just render it out, load it in as a noise sample, put the chorus on, and voila we have the vital effects on the loop. So I don't pretend, potentially want to do this on the kick and bass, but just to show you guys the uh, power of being able to just render out the loops loaded into vital.
On second thought, that actually sounds pretty cool. Maybe we can mix that in with the kind of macro. So what I like to do is instead of just assigning everything to an LFO, I want to assign it to a macro because then I can sweep it manually, the different kind of lengths and stuff. So what I want to do here is start assigning some of these things to a macro. So that uh, modulation of that depth parameter sounded pretty good. I also want to just modulate it inwards with the mix. So we started like a clean one. And here is where it gets interesting. The pitch of the sample basically determines the speed at which it plays back. So if we apply a macro to the pitch and we rise this up, that loop is going to speed up and speed up and speed up. So just to make things simpler, I'm going to assign the LFO to the macro just so I don't have to uh, read, write and, and automate it while it's busy being played. And then let's make this something like four over one. <laughs> I'm being silly now. I said I'm going to do it onto the macro and now I've set it onto the LFO. So now what we can do is we can actually unassign this LFO and just manually automate this. So now we can expand this. Like I said, we can load uh, the hi-hat loop in here. We could load a synth loop, all sorts of different sounds and use the same parameters or the same kind of uh, thing that we've created here to get like a similar sound, but we've got the different layers. So we can then further process them, further EQ them or filter them or something like that. Check this out. I'm, I might just uh, fast forward this a little bit. So then we can jump back into Vital and then let's just load up the percussion loop over here instead of the kick and bass loop. Okay, so this lead that comes in after the break, I want to try to put this into the riser thing so we can kind of like hint at what's coming, but in a kind of like not quite the full pattern. We just use like the tone of that sound to create the riser. Then let's load up the synth here. Perfect. Awesome. That's about it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm going to be posting this preset to my Patreon for my $5 supporters. But remember that you most likely have to render your own sample and pop it in there. But I'm going to post it with this little synth sound um, because I guess that could fit into so many different contexts without the kick and bass. But you can put your own kick and bass sample in there and it should you know, track to however you want it to. You can use the LFOs or the macro or whatever. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if you haven't yet, consider subscribing to this channel and hitting that like button. See you guys next time. Cheers.